Welcome back to the Fate of Drakenheim. This is the Dungeon Dudes weekly Dungeons and Dragons actual play campaign. My name is Monty Martin, running our campaign as Dungeon Master. And I'm Kelly McLaughlin, playing Wilhelm von Kessel, the human swashbuckler rogue. And we're joined today by our good friends. Jill Denitis, playing Rudy Whitaker, the shifter eldritch knight. And Joel Gorman, playing Wrath, the Asimar warlock. Thank you for joining us again. We are the Dungeon Dudes, and Kelly and I post new videos Tuesdays and Thursdays over on YouTube where we cover everything D&D &D and TTRPGs, including advice for players and guides for game masters, so check that out over on our channel. You can also join us on Tuesday evenings when we broadcast the campaign on Twitch. You can check us out from 6 p.m. to 8 p.m. Eastern Time at twitch.tv slash dungeon underscore dudes. You can also watch the video episodes of the show on YouTube or check us out as an audio-only podcast as well. And of course, if you love the world of Drakenheim and want to dive into it for yourself, head on over to Drakenheim.com, where you can pick up Dungeons of Drakenheim based on the events of the first season of our campaign, or pre-order your copy of Sebastian Crow's Guide to Drakenheim. With that, let us return to Drakenheim. Drakenheim is no more. The devastation which fell upon that accursed place left a kingdom in ruin. Now, horrors lurking in the haze grow ever more great and terrible. While simmering tensions between rival factions boil over into outright war, the power of monarchs, mages, and priests hangs in the balance. Six unlikely heroes join forces to confront the coming chaos. They shall decide once and for all. The fate of Drakenheim. Welcome back. When last we left our heroes, Rudy, Wilhelm, and Wrath were exploring a mysterious and paradoxical complex filled with riddles, seated seemingly by Bruce or those in worship or service of the Eldritch Entity that has the Warlock packed with wrath. Exploring the complex and facing down the strange riddles left in place by this odd being, our heroes solved the final riddle that they encountered and have walked through several of the rooms in a, in a paradoxical sequence not unlike a circle, bringing themselves into a hidden chamber. As the final, as the answer to the final riddle echoes in your mind, how does a cat stop time with its paws? You feel the passage of that time, that heartbeat extended out moment by moment and then the heartbeat that stops halfway through the pulse but not the stopping of the heart like in death like a sudden just ending to time you come into a place where you feel in your own body not even your blood circulating through your veins. That normal feeling that you feel in your body of your blood, your air, your heart, your lungs, your organs, all working and throbbing and pumping and doing all the things that are needed to keep your life alive have not ceased. They have simply paused. It is a strange feeling in your body as you move and can still take what feels like the action of breathing, but like your lungs are still full. The feeling of the blood not needing to pump through your body. As you look out in the place that you are in, you feel 
that slow feeling of your eyes sliding against your eyelids, the moisture of your eyes themselves held in time, yet as your body moves without time, leaving the particles in place that makes your vision blur slightly and strangely. The sensation is alien, uncomfortable, and all around you, inescapable. You take in the place that you are in. It is a colonnaded temple. The columns are made of all manner of strange geometric shapes with cubes and holes riddling through them. And in several places, the holes in the pillars lead to upholstered chambers, like the pillars are towers meant for cats to explore and play within. In fact, as you look around at the scoping towers that reach up in impossible directions, you see the interconnected pathways that end and catch with just your imagination all the ways that cats would frolic and play, finding perches and places to look out across the impossible horizon above you. The vistas that look out across stars and time and space, swirling with no beginning or end above you. Here in this chamber, there is a portal behind you, the doors closed. There are several, three great crystalline columns ending in large glowing delirium crystals, one of rough crystalline matter, the other two smooth and thin. And at the far end of the chamber, is a multifaceted portal made of many concentric, concentric rings that could open up like an orrery. Several dancing lights illuminate the area, though the light from the ambient world around you would provide sufficient lighting. Beyond the colonnade that supports this room is simply an eternity. Before the portal, upon a padded altar, sleeps Bruce. Yet, in the stairs that subdivide this chamber, sitting upon the top row of the stairs that comes up to the platform where Bruce sleeps, is a massive machine. It is altogether otherworldly in its construction, made of a metal of silvery blue-black with a great golden disc engraved in its chest which spins around a bizarrely flesh-like eye. It is vaguely humanoid in shape, though it has no head. The arms come out like tree trunks from the torso, but this ring in its chest and the eye are sensibly its face. It is engraved in unmistakably elfish runes. And it sits stoically on the edge of the stairs. Meanwhile, <sighs> all throughout the chamber, smaller constructs mingle. Some 
are spheres of similar construction to the first, with spindly limbs and feathered wings coming out their backs. The spheres themselves, a large eye of unmistakable flesh embedded in the midst of them. They flutter throughout the chamber, speaking to themselves in hushed tones. Each of them holds in their spindly fingers wands. And as you see, throughout the chamber, there are small rents that appear for a flickering moment, tears in space and time. When one of these tears appears, and the little construct flutters over to it, and with its wand, like a needle, sews it shut. Several more of these machines amble about the chamber. Bruce sleeps unbothered or perhaps unaware of the machines around him. What do you do? You can place yourselves in the area. I got chills. <laughs> that description of eternity <laughs> into the like abyss, just forever. Um. Bruce was uh, out of here. What? How? This I do not know. <laughs> um, I stand with you before something I do not yet understand. But this feels as if where we're supposed to be. I would say the opposite, Raph. I don't feel like we're supposed to be here at all. I agree. I, I, at first, when we were coming in, I was like, is this what it feels like to have your heart stop? And I know my vision's getting bad as I age, but it just feels weird and blurry. Even as you speak, you can feel the stoppage of the sound waves rippling out of your mouth. Like the sound itself isn't able to move through time. And so as you look at each other speak, your mouths are out of sequence with the words that you're hearing. Whoa. This is disorienting. I will continue to, to speak within your minds as I look towards each of you. And I, 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 I you can see it. In Wrath's eyes, he's he's excited, he's scared, he's uh, nervous. There's 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 a lot of uh, he you he's definitely outside of his depth, but he's 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 where he thinks this is the most important place he's ever been. I do not understand what these machines are for, but that is Bruce. Rule number 51, do not tinker with things beyond your comprehension. And I think we're in the midst of tinkering with things far beyond even your comprehension, Wrath, despite what Bruce may or may not have told you or led you, this is not a place for mortals. Do you not want to know? I don't, I don't, I don't know. If I want to know whatever it is that we're going to know, I, I don't know. I don't know if I'm ready for that. We must know. What? That is why we're here. Wow. Riddles on riddles. It is all clear. Um, I mean, I'm here to help you get to know the knowing, but I don't necessarily want to know the knows. <laughs> I don't, I don't know what I want to know. If you want to know, you can know, but I'm not, I'm not going to know what you know. I know. 
but I'm all for helping you know what you need to know. You know? No. <laughs> Great. Um, we retook the clock tower in Drakenheim, these oh. three. Did we encounter the Mojons there? Yes. Are these <laughs> similar or the same? Yes. We've seen these in the clock tower. These little tinker gadget guys? Yes. That's the only other place we've ever seen them in the whole world. Mm. The clock tower that stopped where the planes and time stopped. They stopped. They went to where time stopped. Maybe they are Maybe they are caretakers of time. Did they go there or did they... Is time stopped because they're there? They were trying to fix the clock of the clock tower. Just as if what I believe they are doing here is fixing something much more ethereal. It's more concerning to me I mean, not more cons equally concerning, I'll say. <laughs> Everything's about evenly concerning right yeah, now. Yeah, it's um, right on the same plane. Concern. The, the large one that is looking right at me um, <laughs> has elven ruins. Or elven runes. Not ruins. Runes. Has the eye looked around? Does it, does it move or is it perfectly still? It's watching. So looking at you, it uh, it has elven runes on it. I'm gonna go up there and, and, and read them. Raft, do you speak elven? I, I can, I can understand. Um, I just need a moment. I, I mean, I can. I just didn't want to. <laughs> <laughs> well, this could be an opportunity if you wanted to. Uh, um, and I, <laughs> I fall to my knees and start drawing circles on the ground. <laughs> and I want to cast uh, Comprehend Languages as a ritual spell. While he's doing that, <laughs> I would like to give a rousing speech using Inspiring Leader. Okay. The machines seem completely unbothered by your presence um, as you as you do this, they continue on their their little way. As they do, there is a brief moment where one of the holes opens up for a moment. And, nor and normally the speedy machines quickly go to each one. This one is open for a heartbeat longer in the sense that a heart could beat in this place. And as it happens, a moat energy, almost like a ball of yarn, flies out of the hole. And it zips towards Bruce. As it does so, one of the machines stops what it's doing, zips over to the mode of energy and catches the energy. And with speed, pulls it back into the hole and sews it shut. So while you're drawing <laughs> symbols on the ground. I see that. <sighs> friends, I don't know where we are. I'm scared, we are alone, I don't know what to do, I am terrified, but... <laughs> Strong start to your speech. We have been through things of a more normal nature, but equally terrifying. And together, we have mostly made it through unscathed. If we stick together, there's a chance that maybe 
we can make it out of here alive. Um, good luck. And where are you going? I, I'm, 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 uh, let, I, I pull out my book and start flipping through my rules. Um, mm, mm, mm. uh, uh, Rule number 56, some doors are, are best left closed. Um, nope, nope. Um, rule number uh, the 70, retreat is not the, wait, yeah, retreat is not the tactic of cowards, but of the wise. No, that way. Um, listen, I closed, I closed the book. Um, I, the, my rules don't really account for spaces in between time and existence and cats. Um, so we'll do our best to figure this out and Raph, I, I hope it's worth it. Hit points for everybody. <laughs> I say it's getting better. Got some pointers. We'll go after them on our way home. You'll get better. <laughs> not bad. Not bad. I mean, in this current situation, I'm not sure what speech to give. Uh, what, uh, how many hit points do we get? 17 temp HP. Wow. I feel inspired. <laughs> I am inspired to protect you <laughs> in this instance. Thank you. <laughs> you finished casting the spell to comprehend languages. What do you want to do with that? I approach the large mechanical chest eye. Mm -hmm. creature push you towards <laughs> and with a curiosity i want to examine these elven runes okay but uh i'm gonna remind approach... chopper hand languages to understand the written language that you see oh no you I must think be I know touching exactly. the surface on which the words are written Yes, this is good. Uh, it's a shame that nobody else here speaks Elvin. Can I? Can I? <laughs> I entirely put Wrath in this what's, situation. What's a what's a what's a fair distance that you could you could read a read something inscribed on something? Oh, probably a good like three to four feet away, and I could read it. Um, I'm still back at the door. I have like my back pressed against the wall. <laughs> I'm not taking another step into this room. It's like how, 2020 vision in your one eye. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. You're good. 20. I could probably take like five steps and read it, but I'm not going to. Yeah. Yeah. What's your, yeah. What's your you distance? Took, you took 10 minutes and now you have to touch it to read, but you said you could and I believe you. I'm going to come up behind you just in case. Um, I'm going to stay behind Just like door. slightly behind uh, Raph, just in case this thing goes for him. Like five feet behind. Yeah. There is no, uh, no mage hand, no, uh, no tricks. I, I approach the creature and looking directly into the eye, I, I reach out into its mind, whatever mind might be there, and I ask, can I touch you? There is the sound of moving metal, that low cr creaning, cranking noise as the eye boom, shoots to look towards you directly. I, I kind of jolt back a, a moment, but I keep my stance. I hold you there. <laughs> and you like hear the words reverberate back into your mind. You shall not pass, Warlock. Didn't even answer the question. I reply, that is my mentor, my savior, and my God. I must pass. The reply comes to you. 
then you must choose knowledge or death. Which curse would you take up? I'm going to turn around. And I'm going <laughs> to... I'm going to motion Rudy to, to come back and I'm going to walk towards Wilhelm. I'm like and, walking kind of like half backwards watching it because I'm not really sure. And I, and I, and we, we have to confer. What did the runes say? <laughs> so the, 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 the gatekeeper has told me that we, I must make a choice. But that choice has already been made. So I ask you. Do you wish to follow me through it for what I seek or what you can leave now? What choice? It's not a choice, but to get to Bruce, it will try to destroy us. What? Um, Ru- there's a lot of things that try to destroy us. Yeah, but that thing, it, it's made of metal. I have a, a, a sword, a crossbow. It's got a, it's got a, an eye, and it just poked in that. Okay, weak spot. I just, I, I, I need you both to know that I, I am, I am in, uh, I am in a great debt to both of you. I would not have made it this far without you. Okay. And I don't like to be interrupted while I. <laughs> Well, I, I'm just, I'm just so concerned. Carry on. My, my trying to show. I'm so uncomfortable. My, show, show my 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 gratitude. Um, mm-hmm. So I, I give you the option. Because, I, I do not know, um, what lies on the other side, uh, of either choice, knowledge. Or death. Those are the choices. Those are the choices he gave you. Yes. Are you choosing whether you'd like knowledge or death? I I think it's it's I think it's more just. Yeah, yeah. I think I think we we. I don't have a choice, but you do. I mean, it it is a choice. He gave you the choice. You still have to make. But the choice. he's not the one that. I've already decided. Hmm. I decided the moment that I pledged myself to Bruce. So I, but you both are, you have autonomy, you have your free will, and I'm giving you the choice whether you not you want to follow me. So again, I am ever grateful. I would not be here. It is not many times I have found those who would follow me or for Bruce is a difficult one to understand so i thank you but i i do not know what lies ahead and if you do this i don't know what will happen i just know that i have to i mean perhaps you know the funny thing is we never know what's gonna happen we make choices and we can make the best choice that's for us and you know as soon as we left Tierhaven. You should know, and hope we've shown it by now, that we're in this together. I get it. You are very committed to your cat. We're here to support you on that. And if we, we've shown that through stepping through this with you, all right? I'm not going to let you go and choose knowledge or death without having some backup. Mm-hmm. Well, that may be different, but... No, no. I... Raph, rule number 35, you always have a choice. It may not seem like it, but but you do. But whatever that choice is, rule number 47 is teamwork is the key to achieving the unachievable. We are in a situation that confounds me, but together, maybe we can, we can tackle it. Um, Rule number 61, trust those you fight with, who bleed with you and are prepared to die with you. I trust you two endlessly. 
I there's a strong urge in me to leave and never come back here again, but I would not abandon you two with my life. I do want to bring some logic into this, though. We're in a place where there's the time is stopped. What's logical about this? Observing the room. We have this uh, gatekeeper mm. in the middle mm-hmm. who you have spoken to. Not read the elephant. You failed to read the, the <laughs> elven on it. I was I, <laughs> concerned that the touching of the creature would probably begin the choice. I will approach with you and read the elven runes on it, but if this gatekeeper attacks us, what do we think of these other smaller creatures? If they abandon their posts, hopefully they don't, but if they did, what if more yarn balls of light and to, I, I don't know. I, they seem very precise on their task and I don't want to disrupt what's going on in this room because it seems, okay, I, I know very little about planes or, 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 or time or any of that, but what's happening in this room feels like if we disrupt it, it could be dire for, for everyone. Um, Do you think though that Bruce would really let such a disruption happened. Bruce is right over there. Ruby, yes. I do. <laughs> really? I am concerned about Bruce's intentions with our friend. I said that out loud. Yeah, you, yeah. I tried to whisper, Although, but it didn't work. it's okay. I understand your concern. I need you to know that these creatures, whatever their role is, we do not know the intention. Yeah. It could be the reason why this place stands still. It could be the reason why time does not move forward. Mm. And that is why we are here. And if there is something standing in my way of understanding it, then I must pass it. Um, Okay, Wrath. um... But uh, if you want to try to read it, maybe that will give us more insight. Mm. Let us approach together. Okay. As a team. That was better than my whole speech earlier. Yeah, I like that. Yeah. That's that's <laughs> 17. That's a 17 right there. Yeah. yeah. All right, let's get up so, there and read some. So we're gonna we're gonna approach. Who wants to be in the middle? I will read in the middle. <laughs> I will be to your right with also just my hand ready to push you back on up there. But like Raph, you're the one doing all the approaching. I'm just gonna I'm just here to read. Yeah, yeah, you're here, here you're just here for the uh sorry, sorry, sorry everyone. Uh I'm not I'm not a hundred percent fluid. I don't speak Elvin very well, but I can read and and write it. I, I studied it as a kid, uh for dealings with people. Elves. Elves. Yeah. Elvin, Dwarven, they're the two most common languages to learn when you're royalty just so that you can negotiate with with all sorts of people um so let's see what i can make of this i attempt to read the situation and by that i mean (laughs) (laughs) the the, the the situation (laughs) yep yep. it's a story it tells of a place called Arcadia, where young elves still learning their way in the multiverse, building their first homes, found that there were rats coming to their homes and eating their food, spreading sickness, and disease, filth, and contamination. And then the cat came, and the cat caught the rats, and the elves did not get sick, their food was not eaten, and once in a while, a cat would leave a dead rat before the threshold of the elves' homes as a reminder 
of the work that it had done. But the elves knew that the rats were still coming. The cat was not the friend of the elves. The cat was there because the elves attracted the rats and the cat wanted to eat the rats. The cat was only there to eat the rats, not to rid them from the home of the elves. Wrath, I'm, I'm starting to put something together here. This story. What does it say? This, this is an elven story about a place called Arcadia. Um, Do you know it? No, I, I don't, I don't think I would know, you know, no, um, it's unfamiliar to me, but, but. Well, you did hear in Walter Banyan's story. Right. Um, I, I only know what we know, which, mm. which I, something linking to the history of the elves, but that's, that's all I know. Um. But the story rings similar to the stories that we've heard throughout this temple. It's of rats, elves, cats. The elves and humans are interchangeable in these stories. They're, the rats come into the home. They cause problems. Yeah. The cats show up and rid the homes of those problems. In the earlier stories, it appeared the cats were helping the humans. That's the impression that, that I got. This story has, th there's a little more nuance in Elven language. I, I can draw a bit more out of the story here, and it's the the way that they use language, there, there's, there's more to the subtext uh, and meaning behind words. It's, it's less that the cats were helping humans or Elves. It reads more like the elves were sort of a food dispensary system. Placing an elf in a home attracted rats to the home. Elves, humans, they have food, they have space, they have places to hide, they fill a home with things. Rats flourish in those environments. Cats came to eat the rats. They care not for us. They care for what we can offer them in terms of food. It doesn't read that were their enemies either, they would need us to draw the rats. It's more mutually beneficial. Mutually beneficial. They, they see us They see us as a means to their goals. In a way, that would imply that the cats use us. But what happens when we stop attracting the rats or the rats are gone? I don't know. And is it really rats we're talking about? I mean, might be, you know, it's in rats all around, rattlings and stuff, but I gotta think. Mm. I is mean, this just some metaphor or is it the real thing? Rats could be a metaphor for vermin of any kind. These cats obviously are more than just cats. In, in our depiction, often cats are viewed as house cats, they get rid of the rats, but now we have an entire city filled with mutant rats. And we have the appearance of cats who are far beyond that of a house cat. We have other vermin. We have extra planar entities seeping into our world. Perhaps, perhaps, bear with me on this. I think I know what you mean. Delirium has created thin places. Mm. 
Delirium has caused all of the horrors that we've had to face this entire journey has been caused by Delirium bringing entities into our world. The vermin. The vermin. Mm. The cats seemingly have... When did you find Bruce? It was before or after the meteor hit Dragonite. It would have been after. It would have been after, yeah. Because uh, it was when he was, it was when Wrath was older. So a massive piece of delirium, which is here in this room, by the way, the three delirium crystals. Uh, obviously, there's a connection between the cats, the elves, delirium. There's something about that that I haven't quite pieced together yet. But mm. Delirium hits Drakenheim. You're approached by a cat far beyond a normal house cat. It Why? Is... To, to, to use you to draw vermin out. And, I mean, this place has been built, what, hundreds, thousands of years ago? Thousands. It has to be. Cats do enjoy their sleep. And the, the first stories of humans reaching out during the, the great winter, they reached out to, in, the, in these stories, cats. So they've been around since before recorded history. But so is this delirium. You think this just showed up with... No. This We've seen this before, where delirium showed up before the... The meteor struck. This might not be the first time that the cats have had to awaken and deal with the vermin. But then we still serve a purpose, although it's, I'm not going to lie, I feel very small right now in the grand scheme of whatever this cosmic battle between the cats and the vermin is. And it just seems like a giant meteor hitting Drakenheim opened up a reason for a battleground. A battleground. On our plane. Between the cats and their prey. Using humans. I know what side I've chosen. And but does this mean that really the answer is Bruce? It could be. Answer to what? The delirium, the rats, the problems we were having. To Drakenheim. It seems like what we've discovered here is that in the past, the cats have been the ones to help us through. To we're get trying rid of to vermin. figure out how to solve everything. What I'm still nervous about is the way that this story reads make me f makes me feel like we are of little importance to the cats. What happens if we do side with them and they do help us rid this place of vermin, help us save Drakenheim or whatever? The words were very specific. The cats were not there to get rid of the rats. Mm -hmm. They were there they will not abolish the infestation, but they will control it. They might be. It creates balance. Mm. That is what we seek. Not to exterminate, but to create harmony. I guess to fulfill their hunger, but that helps us in the end, does it not? I mean, if there's no way to rid ourselves of delirium and the vermin seeping through, perhaps, but the optimal choice would be to rid ourselves of all of these entities. No offense. If delirium was a new thing, a new... If it had only come here 15 some years ago, it would make sense that removing it would resolve the issue. But as we've seen, delirium 
outlasts all of us. It's been here. It will continue to be here. I do not believe it is the, the problem. I mean... It's bad. It is a problem. It's bad. <laughs> it's a problem, but it's not the problem. Then what is the problem, Wrath? I believe the problem is the extra delirium. I don't know. I might have got ahead of myself. I still think we need to destroy as much delirium as possible. You gotta get the numbers down a Especially little bit. It's, if it's attracting. Right? right now we have more vermin than cats. We do. Yeah. Let's restore balance. Um, I think it's the step forward, but what does that mean for, for what we got going on? Do we? I believe it is time to awaken Bruce. Oh yeah, he's truly, sleeping. truly awaken him. I'm just gonna switch spots with Wrath here. <laughs> <laughs> You, I, I imagine you shuffle like on the narrow edge. You're like, oh, yep, yep, yep. yep. It's like, oh, wait, 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 are we switching? Oh, okay, cool. As, as we're having this conversation, I'm just like inching to the side of you, pushing you to the middle. All right, Rath, um, I'm with you, I say as I step. <laughs> you can read it from there. You can read it from there. Now, what did you say your choices were? It's, it told you choices, Wrath. What were your I, choices? My choices are as follows. <laughs> There's two. <laughs> Knowledge All right. or death. I mean, that seems like an easy choice. Yes. Hmm. But what th is there a trick? Yes. The, I believe it is the trial that stands before you, that will determine the choice you receive. Knowledge or death, a puzzle? Yeah, I'm pretty sure it's just the big guy with the eye in his chest. Yeah, but is he he's either gonna ask you a riddle? I don't know if you're gonna read back into it. No. He's got stories all over him. Yeah, it's either a riddle or a fight. I mean, I'm good at one of those things. I'm not good at the other yeah, one. Yeah, the, the so riddles, they get me. just let me know where you need me. I mean, I might be oversimplifying it. Okay, but here's a question. If we choose knowledge, and he asks us a riddle, and we fail to get the riddle right, and he says, now you can't pass, and we try to pass anyway, then we... Then you get the other option anyways. Unless there's something that like <laughs> shunts us out of this dimension. I honestly didn't even think that I actually could ask about the choice so i'm gonna ask okay ask. yeah i look into the eye i choose knowledge i thought you were gonna ask <laughs> <laughs> oh. <laughs> no i'm gonna ask about the choice i want the choice that doesn't it's not death <laughs> get your dice that's all i ask <laughs> i'm going to ask oh. i choose <laughs> Rather than his grammar. <laughs> the vo the <laughs> machine responds very well. In choosing knowledge, you reject the inevitability of death, and the machine stands. Oh. And the disc around its eye begins to spin with a whirring noise as you hear the clicking of the gears and clockwork inside it as its arms open up into large cl a large clawed hand and the other arm opens up into a, into a great glaived fist. And as it begins spinning up, the other creatures, the machines in the room, their agitation begins. And you hear the voice of the machine say to you, if you choose knowledge, then do what you came to do, if you can. And with that, it stands, and there's a 
sudden feeling of force that emanates from around it. And as the air particles themselves that are stopped in time are pushed away from it, you can see the tangible barrier of force that envelops the machine's form. The tethers reaching out like it itself has been stitched in place by the smaller machines. It replies, I have waited a long time and we can wait for you to make your choice. If you choose knowledge, do it. I approach Bruce. As you go to approach Bruce, the hand of the machine stops you. It lowers and you hear, if you step one more, you will have made your choice. I'm assuming only you hear this. <laughs> mm. So I, I was trying to walk past it and it stopped me. Oh no. Wrath, what do you need to do? Use your knowledge. It seems tethered to this place by the smaller creatures. Can you call Bruce to you? Br Bruce is your, well, your Bruce is whatever. I, I, I look over the arm, the gigantic arm, and I look to Bruce and I reach out to him. Can you be a little more restrictive about what you mean by reach out? I, psychically? I'm going to, yeah, I'm going to dip into his mind and attempt to call out to him. Bruce, I have come for the knowledge. I am here. Bruce's voice echoes in your mind. Then do what none before you have done. Destroy them and release me. I did not know you were trapped. Uh-oh. Bruce is trapped! Uh-oh. By what? By Back. these creatures. Are we sure that we want to do this? Are we sure that are we sure that we want to release Bruce? Is, yes. Okay. If he is in trouble, are we sure <laughs> that we want to yes. release Bruce? Wilhelm, I ain't sure of none of this, all right. But I think the ratten's on the wall. Or on this thing. <laughs> well, also on the wall. There was murals. There was more right. stories, right? If this is the wrong choice, Rudy, we jeopardize. All of everything. I think all of everything's already in jeopardy. This might just make it happen a little bit faster. But... <laughs> <laughs> That's why it's speed up jeopardy. Well, sure. <clears throat> all right. I'm coming. Okay, what do you do? I want to cast hold monster. No, wait, no, it's it's got a force field on it. No, I want to... I cast Mass Suggestion. Okay. I target everything except the creature in the middle, the gatekeeper. Mm -hmm. And I tell these creatures, I reach into their mind and I say, come to me. Okay. As you cast the mighty spell to reach out and control these creatures, 
you see, you feel palpably the axiomatic minds that control these things cannot be compelled to act in a nature contrary to their instructions. And the, and the magic, do, they do not obey your command. Instead, several of them look to the rifts that have been opening and they pull the stitches clo closer. And meanwhile, their little hands open up and form into slings and crossbows uh -oh. that they aim toward towards you. Roll for initiative. Uh oh. Uh oh. It didn't work. It's okay. It was just one of my like. You tried. It's good. Did we hear like what Bruce told you? You said Bruce is trapped. Yeah. Do we know what we're supposed to? Okay. Kill it all. What do we got? Four. Kill everything. Four for Rudy. <laughs> 26. 26 for Wilhelm. Uh, 15. The great machine, the central disc whirs, and you feel the clicking metronome beat, the mechanical heartbeat that synchronizes the machines in this chamber as it stands, readying itself to attack. Wilhelm, you are first to act. So as I'm backing up down the stairs, I bump into one of the little guys, just as Wrath says, kill them all. <laughs> and so I'm yep. going to turn and stab this little dude behind me in his eye. Okay. Wrath, I hope you're right. I yell. I am right. Ooh. Oh, I have to roll the hit first. Oh, yes, you do. Yes. <laughs> I forgot how D&D &D works. Okay, I rolled to hit. <laughs> getting, getting a 19. That is a hit. I will keep my same terrible roll, because uh, that seems unfair to roll it again. You were just excited. As you strike the, the, the cute creature in the eye, there is a, what, how much damage do you do? 32. It collapses and as if time has suddenly taken it, you see it corrode and rust and disintegrate to dust as if the passage of time of thousands of years immediately affected its met metallic composition. As it, uh, as it does so, um, you see that the little rift behind it is now unattended. Uh, it's fine. I We want the rifts. I don't know if that's the case, but you did great. <laughs> I, Anything else will help? I'm going to turn and fire my crossbow at this dude. Okay. Uh, getting an 18 to hit. It's a hit. For uh, 11 damage. It is damaged. Beep, beep, but not destroyed. Uh, and then seeing this rift, uh, which makes me uncomfortable, I'm going to <laughs> hop down onto this table here and face, I pull out my sword and face these other ones and yell, on guard! And that's, that's my turn. Awesome. Okay. The gatekeeper. <laughs> yeah, no. That's why I moved. <laughs> so scared. Takes, collapses its fist into, sorry, rolls its fingers into a fist, moves backwards, uh -oh. and punches you, Wrath. <laughs> You are hit for 30 damage, and you are sent flying back 20 feet. Ah! He didn't even roll the hit. <laughs> nope, he does not. <laughs> Which way does he launch me? Uh, he launches you straight back. You land prone on the ground and take an extra seven damage from the fall. Oh! Right back. <laughs> you just flew like over me. On guard! Ah! <laughs> yeah. Uh-oh. Okay. Probably shouldn't have been based with him. Stands up. 
Um, and its other fist is at the ready for any who dare approach it. The drones. <laughs> this wounded one, it flies over to the great machine and its parts dis disconnect and form onto and bolt onto the form of the bigger machine. So it becomes like part of it? Yes. Uh-oh. Well. Oh no. And then the others. I feel like Rudy's the only You've one who got saw that happen. <laughs> two down here, one beside me, three. one on the other side. Oh, there's three, sorry, okay. the flying one. And then uh, four up top. Yeah. So as they open up their arms into kind of this four barrel little crossbow. Uh oh. Um, and an array of shots, you're all gonna get shot four times. Now they get disadvantage because I'm prone? Uh, they would have disadvantage against you because you're prone. Yes. Um, chance. So a um, chance. against Rudy, I get four shots for a 22, a 21, a 16, and a 12. I'm going to use my last first level slot to cast okay. shield. Against Wilhelm, um, the highest is a 16. They all bounce off my armor. And against Wrath, because they're with disadvantage, I get a 19. <laughs> I get an 11, oh. I get a 10, and I get a five. Okay, definitely a hit. So five damage for one. Ah! <laughs> I'm a on bunch the of bolts, <laughs> and you're like, ah, ah. ah. <laughs> Yeah. Ah! You hear Bruce in your mind. Open the way, and I will help you. It's your turn. I stand up. And I reach into my ring of spell storing mm -hmm. and I cast haste on Rudy. Okay. Okay. Love haste. And uh, I'm going to, and, and, and I, I say back to Bruce, I am coming. All right, Rudy, it's your turn. Okay. Um, and I have an additional action on my turns. I am going to start by using my regular action to use my lunar axe to cast fairy fire on Big Guardian. Okay. Um, so I need a dexterity saving throw. He succeeds. Oh no. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he's not rolling yet. I think we need to kill the little ones. Yeah. <clears throat> okay. Um. Then I'm gonna. And I think I you know. even have double movement speed because of. Uh... I do, but I'm right up against. You're not up against him. No. The big guy. Oh. You were down the steps. Wrath went up the stairs. Okay. It's how you get punched. If I mean, you, unless he if has you a want, reach, if, if you want to get punched, feet. if you want to get punched, go up there, check him out, mm. touch his arm. If he, if he has to reach a ten feet, I, I I apologize for saying you're not in his. <laughs> <laughs> but you are standing ten feet away. Okay, I I can't really get to many of these guys. You have double movement. There's one here beside me. There's one over there. There's one up here. Yeah. Uh, and then there's the other four behind him. I'm gonna use then my bonus action to misty step over here. Okay. And can I get that far? I think I can. You can misty step thirty, right? You can. Yeah. Yeah, get me beside one of the guys. And then I just uh, take my action surge actually to. Three shot. So I'm gonna Woo. hit hit this a little bit. Uh twenty-three to hit. It's a hit. Nineteen damage. He is damaged but not destroyed. Give him another 
Yeah, yeah, finish there we him. There go. Uh, 23 to hit. Indeed. 24 damage. As your axe bears down upon it, it shatters into pieces that immediately rust. Uh, one and more. And his rift is unattended. I'm gonna go for this guy in the corner. Okay. I uh, got one more on that one. Oh, uh, 12 to hit. It's a miss, I'm afraid. Okay. It flutters out of the way as it does so. And then I have my haste yeah. action yeah. that I can use to take one weapon attack against it. Um, not to be that guy, um, you did cast Misty Step and Fairy Fire in the same turn. Oh, shoot. No, you're so right. So what I'm going to do is do you're going to get hit by an opportunity attack. That's okay. Sorry, I totally. Um, so you are hit and you take 30 force damage. <laughs> um, and it sends you flying forwards in the direction that you wanted to go. Okay. <laughs> um, so you would be be there, so you can still attack the 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 other one. Uh, but I think that's actually going to be the be your turn. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 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 Okay. Um, yeah, but you did not expend the spell slot for Misty Step, so you still have that. I get. Yeah, I get to cast it. Yeah. Well, I get to cast it without the spell slot once. Okay, cool, yeah. cool. So you haven't expended that. We go to the top of the round with Wilhelm. Um, He's breaking rules all the time. <laughs> See what we can get away with. I'm going to run up next to Raph. Hey. And uh, as as he's collecting himself, <laughs> and I'm this going- big imprint of knuckles on my chest. Yeah. <laughs> like... You're like wheezing. <laughs> and I'm going to attack the one next to him. Do I have, we haven't taken a rest, have we? I'm, I'm out of luck. But yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, uh, cool. Carry hard by luck points. Once you get the hit. Uh, does a nat one hit? No, no um, it's not. All right, uh, I'm then going to, so I stab in its general direction. It just, whoop. Yeah, it's not there. It's not where you stab. You uh, almost stabbed me. Huh? Yeah, and then I'm like, what? And then I pull out my crossbow. We're gonna roll the other die. Uh, that's gonna be a 22. That does hit. <laughs> uh, and I'm gonna use my sneak attack on that one then. Ah, so good. So, it it shifts over to the side and I quickly draw my crossbow and shoot it in the eye. Uh, getting... Oh, we got two rifts open at the start of the round. Uh, can I get us two d6s rolled? Uh, I'll do. I'll roll one. I'll roll one. Three. Four. Okay. They have not worsened. Yet. <laughs> oh wait, there's reps. I forgot about those. Now I'm feeling a bit nervous. <laughs> <laughs> no, you can't go back now. <laughs> Thirty-two damage. It is destroyed. The shot. It, it goes wide, and you recover and shoot where you were supposed to stab. Yeah. Destroying it. <laughs> I thought the riffs. I thought we wanted the riffs. <laughs> I actually, I told you right out of the get-go, I don't know what's going on. I trusted I just, you. <laughs> I trusted Bruce. Okay. <laughs> the great machine. It's fine. Everything's fine. It calls out. Stop. And you can all make a wisdom saving throw. <sighs> Oh no. Oh no. Any any bonuses, anybody? Uh any any, any way to help? No. Uh I got a fifteen. Cock die on a twenty. 15? I'm so sad. Fifteen. <laughs> Wilhelm? Eleven. Thirteen. Thir yeah. You are all stunned no. and you all take forty five radiant damage. Love that. Ow! I'm still okay. Okay. Stunned? Yes. Yeah. Okay. on. Okay, the drones. The drones are gonna move over and they're gonna fix the rifts. The closest one to each. Yep. They go over and, and they, they close, close the rifts. How many drones do I have left? If you have those, 
three, then you still have two that haven't done anything. Okay, so then I'm gonna shoot some stunned uh, stunned people. Uh-oh. Uh, so I'm gonna shoot uh, f- at Rudy and Wrath. So with Rudy with advantage. Wow. Advantage, I get a 20? I might not be I get a 20 for one hit. That hits. Okay, for five damage. And uh, Wrath. You need a 16, AC 16. Everything hits <laughs> oh, uh, for a total of 20 points of damage. Ow! <laughs> and I can't even yell. I think you can muffle a bit. In okay. my mind, I'm yelling. I'm screaming. Uh, and haste is over because you're stunned. So, Ra, no turn. Rudy, no turn. Wilhelm, no turn. Are we still stunned? Uh, well, you are each losing one turn. Right, you're stunned okay. early and it's next turn. Yeah. <laughs> So we're not stunned anymore. Wow. Well, how do we get unstunned? You're not stunned anymore. Oh. Oh, Just yeah. lasted until the yeah. end of the next oh, Turns yeah. around, Rudy pulls back Uh-oh. both its fists and punches you across the room. You take 60 points of force damage oh my God. Oh and my are gosh. sent flying across the room over to Wilhelm and Wrath. Oh! <laughs> <laughs> and land prone. Oh, gosh. And then... Back. I'm so sorry, Rudy. And with all the rifts uh, um, fix, fixed up, we go back to Wilhelm to start this all over again. This foe is beyond us. Wrath, what do we do? We must kill the little ones. The rifts keep them open. <laughs> I, <laughs> I slog over to this, this guy in front of us, closing his rift. And I just take out my rapier and I stab him through the back, hopefully through his eye in the process. I'm going to get a 27 to hit. It's a hit. And we are going to sneak attack. 34 damage. All right. Is he dead? He is destroyed and his rift opens again. I skewer him through the back of the head or whatever, the back of his Mm -hmm, body. mm -hmm, The body thing. And it comes out his eye. With his eye on the end. All right. The machine. Actually, wait, I still have yeah. my bonus action. Yeah. Um, I'm going to shoot at this guy across the way. Okay. Uh, critting. Okay. <gasps> uh, non sneak attack crit on my crossbow. Rolled a six. So that's going to be 17 damage. The crit catches it right in the eye and it is destroyed, leaving another rift. Yes. Unattended. I have two rifts over here, by the way, in case you. Okay, thank you. Need those. Yep. All right. So, Machine. Yeah. Awesome. It begins to whir, and the pieces of the destroyed one on its body, it sloughs them off, and send and two more appear to help it. What? Do they appear near it? Uh, yeah, right beside it. Okay. And the drones, um, I, do I have any near any rifts? Uh, they're all up top. We've killed all the ones oh, at the bottom. Okay. All right. Well, then you're all going to get shot four times. <laughs> and I'm on the ground. Rudy's still prone. Rudy's still prone, so these are with disadvantage. So that turns a crit into a miss. Another hit into a miss. Another hit into a miss. Another crit into a miss. <laughs> Oh my gosh. Um, Wilhelm, uh, I do get a 23. That's the highest. So five damage. And Wrath, uh, I get a 19. Yep. Five damage. Ouch. Okay. Wrath, it's your turn. Bruce said, I must, re- I, if I open the door, he can help me. Mm-hmm. Behind Bruce, can you describe the portal, the, the rift? It is, the main portal is somewhat dormant, but it resonates in the same arcane frequency as the smaller rifts. The smaller rifts are the leaks in the bucket. You hear Bruce say, tear them open. Uh, I'm gonna, shoot an Eldritch Blast at the rifts. Okay, cool. Uh, f- ma- give me a check. Give me an attack roll. 
I, I get a crit. <laughs> okay. <laughs> and the eldritch energy forms a tether as you as your eldritch blast strikes one of the rifts. You feel the energy exploding outward. Roll me a d6. I get a six. Why did he full gateway? And from it, uh, that no, no, replace one of the smaller ones. And from it, stride out two great quantum cats. Oh God, I hope they're... (laughs) Please don't hurt Rudy. (laughs) The shimmering, these cats have six legs apiece and tails that writhe and spin their shadows a mass of just writhing tails. They are midnight purple in color and move like panther, panthers as they slip through the rift. From there, they move forward and they leap towards the great machine to attack it. Oh, yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, get him. Rudy, it is your turn. Um, so I'm gonna stand up. <laughs> One, um, and so that's half my movement, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, I'm going to use. I need to get a little bit of health back. Um, I'm gonna use second wind. Okay. To get seventeen hit points back, and can I? I can only go so far. There's nothing within reach, right? Yeah. Um, I'm gonna start to make my way to the other rift, so like 15. I'll go around the back of the delirium crystal, and for my action, I'll just use the dodge action. Okay. Now. Sounds good. Top of the round with Wilhelm. <laughs> I have brought allies. Seeing the cat, so when the cats, when I, when Wrath first blasts the portal, a look of horror on Wilhelm's face as these two quantum cats slink in. When they jump towards the machine, Wilhelm kind of sees that and immediately turns, and I'm going to turn, steady aim, and fire a bolt at the other rift in an attempt to hit the stitching. Okay. Of the uh, the rift and try to break it open. Mm-hmm. I get a seventeen. Steady aim. Oh right, steady aim. That's the whole point. I get a seventeen. <laughs> the shot sails into the rift, but without magic to pull it open. I look at my crossbow. (laughs) Yep. (laughs) Kill the little ones. I. They're they're all the way over there. No, Um, you're doing great. I look at I look at my wait my cro uh, the the bolts aren't magical. The crossbows. You it it needs to be a spell of some kind. Yeah. Click on spells. (laughs) 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 I look at Wrath. I nod. And I turn away from the rifts, and um, I also, no wait, I used everything. I used my bonus action. Cool, I, I nod at Wrath, the end. <laughs> okay. The great machine takes its fists and it pounds at the machines. Uh, sorry, and it pounds at the quantum cats. It's unearing strikes conflicting with the many spaced nature of these inscrutable beings. So it needs to roll to hit them. <laughs> Ooh. Um, wow. It crits both of them. <laughs> <laughs> so oh, uh, uh, kitties. <laughs> yeah, I just rolled two twenties. Uh, so both get hit. So that moment in time, it moves back. <laughs> boom, 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 boom. And the two uh, creatures are sent flying, and you see the trail of all the possibilities fly back. 
Um, they're sent flying to the base of the stairs. They're not destroyed by those hits, but uh, you guys better be glad that you weren't the ones uh, t uh, soaking that damage. Um, I love that in the instance that it has to make rolls, it did better. <laughs> <laughs> it is inevitable. Mm -hmm. He's gonna rush over there. But I shot that rift. They're gonna fly over to the other rift. The the one the big open the one. The big one. Yep. Um, and now though that big that that big one, they're gonna have to try to see if they actually close it. They don't. Yes. Uh, and the smaller one, the disruption from your shot has ruined some of the stitching on this rift. So it is not able to close. Yeah. I did something. <laughs> yeah. Haha. -ha. Yes. Wrath, it is your turn. I, seeing the creature trying to repair the rift, I'm going to take a shot at the creature. Okay. Um, I get a, tw a 28 to hit. It's a hit. Um, for uh, uh, 10 damage. Okay, it's destroyed. Which one? Or sorry, no, that this actually one. doesn't destroy it. Sorry. Um, I shoot it again for another 28 to hit for another 10 damage. That destroys it. And then after destroying it, I fire my last Eldritch Blast at the Rift itself, um, getting a 17 to hit. Okay. Roll a d6. And does it create another? No, it's the same rift. So I get a three. Okay. The rift expands and grows, ripping open space and time. Ooh. Ooh. However, though it is opened, nothing steps through. Okay. Yep. And I'm gonna back up a little bit behind uh, Yay Crystal here. Okay, Rudy. Okay, um, I'm gonna try to get over to Wilhelm. Since I see this gate has been opened, I'm like, check. You do a lap around the crystal? <laughs> yeah. And I <laughs> There's walk. a guy right here. There's, oh, perfect. There's two. Okay, yeah, I wanna. One beside Wilhelm, one beside uh, well, closing. Go for the one that isn't, I mean, you can go for either one. I'll go the one beside Brad first, and then. These ones are trying to close those there. Nice. Um, okay. I'm gonna take some, take some axe hits on the one in front of me. Uh, 11. Unfortunately, it fl flutters out of the way, uh, furiously trying to stitch closed. Second attempt. Oh, um, 21 to hit. That hits. Nice. Nice. 24 damage. It is destroyed! <clears throat> And uh, do I have enough movement to move to the other side? Mm -hmm. You moved 5, 10, 15, 20, 25. You so can move another. Five more? Okay. Yeah. Yeah. And then I take my last hit against. Nope. <laughs> Sorry, Rudy. <laughs> it's okay. Top of the round. The we time got is two just... rifts open. It's hard. Fully, it's hard. So I can get 2d6s roll, please. I'll roll one. You roll one. And you roll one, Rudy. Oh, oh gosh. Five. Six. <laughs> it was a bit of a fumble, but I'll take it. <laughs> the panic that went along with that roll. Another quantum cat Ooh. enters through one of the rifts. It's a little smaller, but yes. two. not quite as large as the first two, but I don't quite have as many large <laughs> Imagine uh, it's like a bobcat. <laughs> Alrighty. Um, and the, the creatures, um, the things with the writhing tail all move back. They stand up from prone um, and they use their movement to move back up to the great machine. Um, but that's all they've got for their attacks. Just turn. the one who just came through? That's its turn. Okay, okay it's gonna move up. Oh no. It's Willy! Uh, so as Rudy smashes her ax down and the thing in front of her flutters to the side, it flutters right into perfect striking range. Does an 18 hit? It does. Uh, and because Rudy's I next it on to purpose. it. So you. <laughs> in your direction. Yeah, you push it in my direction. Or you force it. We're hurting. Yeah. We're hurting them into the line of fire. 
Um, like we do with the goats back home. <laughs> yeah, just like the just like the ducks and the goats and the other sheep. You guys do sheep? Nope. You never did sheep. <laughs> fair, fair. Sheep, wolf. You know. It doesn't yeah, really... yeah. Fair. <laughs> yeah, it doesn't it doesn't add up. People don't really trust me. Right Thirty-two <laughs> damage. It is destroyed. And then only two remain, I believe now. Um, oh. and then I'm going to move next to my. Quantum Cat Brethren. <gasps> yes. And I'm going to fire my crossbow. Okay. This one. That's a crit. Yes. Uh, lots of crits tonight. I yeah. Love that. I love that for us. Uh, I think we've been crit light for a while. All and of us. That's yeah. again going to be a six on the damage die, so that's going to be um, 17 damage. That destroys it. Yes. Okay. Uh, I'm, I'm in a bad place now, though, but... I know, same. <laughs> Uh-oh. You're standing right beside... I, the, I'm trying the, to... The, the, the gatekeeper. The gatekeeper reels his fist back and <laughs> ha -ha. backhands you. You take 30 force damage and are sent flying. <laughs> Whee! Uh, and then it's going to punch one of the other quantum cats. Uh, actually missing it. Oh, <gasps> yes. <laughs> the, um, the drones, I only have one drone. <laughs> yeah. uh, it's gonna try to repair its rift. <laughs> Do it. Okay, Wrath. Um, I fly up into the, the ceiling of the room mm -hmm. using my winged boots and I shoot out over top of the gatekeeper, and I attempt to burst open the outer um, gate. Okay. The rift, and I get a 25 to hit. It's hit. Roll a d6. Five. With a blast of floor force, it tears open into another yes. gateway. Come, Bruce, I say. Uh, you are let in. These creatures will not hold you any longer. You are not caged. You are free. There's still one more rift. Yeah, I know, but like <laughs> thematically, like I'm trying to trying to release him. <laughs> Alrighty. Uh, what are you gonna do? That that was your first bit blast. Um, and then I'm gonna shoot the second one at the other creature. Uh, I get a twenty-one to hit for uh, 12 damage. Okay, still active. And then a 29 to hit for da -da -da -da, 10 damage. It's blown apart, leaving the last rift yes. unattended. With now I say that line, I say that cool line. Gone, the protective field around the great machine dissipates. Get it. Sick em. Rudy, it's your turn. I sick em. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not a dog, but I'm I know, I know. I didn't mean it as like a as like a I wasn't looking down on you. I was sort of like As I'm going up, I'm like giving you a uh uh no, 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 a no, long no, no, talk no. and I'm just like you don't talk to me that way right that, but sorry, I'm really right, kicking sorry, his butt. Right. Alright, and then I I go at it. Okay. Um Okay. Let's see. Just take a... Uh, 26 to hit. Your axe crashes into the armored hull of the machine. Um, nice. 25 damage. Okay. Oh, yeah. Uh, second, 13 to hit. The second strike deflects off. This is the second one. This is thin like that on a 20. Okay. Um, and the third is um, 22 to hit. It just cracks through its armored hull. Oh! Okay. One more go. Okay. Nice. Uh, Twenty-eight damage. Okay. There we go. And uh, I'm actually great. gonna use my bonus action to shift into my wolfish form and get seventeen temporary points. Top of the round with Wilhelm. Oh, actually, three rifts are open. Three d six, please. One each. One each. Two. Four. Three. Okay. 
Uh, no more uh, quantum cats no. step through the like rifts. Any more. <laughs> but the energy is palpable, and you see the smaller rifts in the room beginning to more appearing with greater frequency. Wrath, uh, sorry, Wilhelm, it is your turn. Uh, I stand up from prone. I try to stand up from prone. Um, I move 15. Actually, I'm going to bonus action dash. <laughs> it's an interesting staircase here. I'll move the, the cat over here a little bit so you can stand there. Pretty. Um, face to face with the gate. So I bound up the stairs, uh, drawing my rapier and aiming for its eye, getting a 26 to hit. You find the weak spot with your rapier. The great eye surrounded by a whirring plate sheds a singular tear. Uh, I get 30 damage, and I immediately do a little side twirl down the stairs 10 feet to uh, get out of its range. That is the rest of my movement. That is my awesome action and my bonus action because I dashed. Cool. All right, with that, the machine. I'm not joking, I love them. <laughs> she turns. It winds up with a windmill punch right under the chin for 30 damage. No, Rudy. Are you okay, Rudy? No. no. <laughs> I just like cough out blood as I'm like being sent back. It's like a spray of blood and, oh uh, yeah. And it strikes another quantum cat. Destroying it. Oh no. So this one's gonna try to run up now, right? Yep. Yeah. It's like I have no more drones, so Wrath, it is your turn. I look at the eyed creature and I reach into its mind and I say, Now for you, it is time that will hold still. And I cast hold monster on it. Okay. It uses this legendary resistance. Ah! <laughs> probably what it should do. It's probably a really good call. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and then I I flitter a little bit. And then that's my turn. Okay. <laughs> Rudy, we're over it's to really you. It's really important to, yeah, you gotta use your move. You gotta use your movement. You gotta use your... Um, I get <laughs> back up. Flutter. <laughs> Bloody thing from my mouth. And, um... I'm gonna go up to it. <laughs> Rudy didn't hear no bell. <laughs> and then I take my axe and I start going at it. Okay. No. Um, thirteen. Nope. You hear the slamming of metal. Clang, clang. Stop it, you. Uh, less than that. <laughs> so <laughs> second was a no go. You can do it, Rudy. <laughs> How did that even happen? And it's it's like mildly cocked on a twenty. Yeah, uh, I, I'll re-roll it. It's okay. How did it bounce? That's three cocked twenties. That was not safe for me today. Okay, well. Okay, okay, nice. 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 That's a hit. Nineteen that's plus. Solid, okay. solid. Okay. Uh, twenty-eight yeah, damage. Yeah, nice. <laughs> three. Okay. Um, am I book? You know what? I'm gonna misty step back okay. from it, just in case. Top of the round, we got three rifts open. Okay. Three D6s, please. Three. One. One. Aww. Something? These rifts are not entirely stable. That's what I'm talking about. <gasps> Something else comes through. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Where, where is, it? is it? Like just a regular doorway, or <laughs> something? Like, something slips through one of the rifts. Perhaps you have three to choose from. Ooh, I do. One, two, three. Okay. Something slips through the rift. Oh. It is a strange and hideous beast. Uh, no, sorry. The the one that's close to you guys. Me. <laughs> It's just right up there. Out of <laughs> you miss your step just as like, a oh, I'm not gonna get it. it has a serpentine body but two scything talons. Um and 
eyes all across its form. Uh, Bruce? Friend? Bruce? <laughs> is, this, is this on our side? Is this on our side? Is this just a weird cat? I hope it's a weird cat. It slithers up towards Rudy. And Friend. these, it has strange eyes and there's smaller hands all, all along the side of its body. It, it slowly slides up to Rudy and it tries to grasp you on your shoulders like it's going to give you a massage. <sighs> give me a wisdom saving throw. Okay. 11. 11. Take 10 points of psychic damage. And it disappears. So it just disappears. <laughs> it crossed my shoulders and then went somewhere. I don't know. I don't like that. <laughs> Did we all see that happen too? Like it just slithers up and and then yep, and then it just fades, like it's melting into Rudy's form. Oh, into my form. Oh, what? Substantially. Yeah. Ru Rudy. <laughs> I thought we had gotten away from things. Rudy, you need a potion or something. <laughs> Rudy's eyes glow brilliant octary. R Rudy! Do I stab Rudy? Wilhelm, it's your turn. I'm going to ignore that. <laughs> <laughs> um... I'm going to wait for something to happen there before I go killing my friend. Um... And I'm going to stab the big guy again. Getting a, a 19. It deflects off its armored body. Not the eye. It oh. blinks. It catches the sword too. <laughs> as its blink opens, I shoot it for a 19. It blinks again. Yeah. Blink, d blink twice. Blink, blink, blink. And then in my best judgment possible, I run <laughs> next to Rudy. Wait, if, it, if it's not one eye, is it blinking or winking? Question, secrets that man was not meant to know. Yeah, that's, <laughs> that's, a, that's a riddle for after the room. Joe? Oh, <laughs> I don't know what happened. <laughs> the gatekeeper attacks the quantum cats, destroying one of them as well. Bigger Come on. Little one. Come, on. It's Come okay. on, little guy. Yeah. Um, okay. Like a Wrath, dog. it's your turn. Uh, I just want to. I want to give a. I want to look at Rudy for a second. Okay. Give me an Arcana check. Uh oh. Um, I get a. Um, twenty-seven. Um. She might be possessed by something <laughs> from the nightmare dimension. <laughs> I say in my head. I think she might be possessed by something from the nightmare dimension. Different from usual. I don't know. Meanwhile, I'm like backing up next to Rudy. I'm like, Rudy, this is a nightmare. <laughs> I'm just like, ah! Um. Uh. Uh, Rudy. It's, it, it's uncertain what motives this creature might have, but the... Uh, but it can be forced out of Rudy's body by re reducing her to zero hit points or knocking her unconscious. It's not or, that hard at this point. <laughs> so you're saying finger, you're probably actually the chance. finger of death and then I get, Rudy, you can live forever under my servitude. No. Uh, my name is in your book, okay? <laughs> oh, we used that earlier. As a heads up. I oh, should. No. I, <laughs> oh, does it only revive one person? What, a per long rest. So we oh. gotta wait. We uh, yeah. I, I I thought it was each person. I wasn't gonna tell you that we didn't have a parachute until, <laughs> <laughs> until it was really necessary. Um, I, have this time. I shoot the large creature. I begin uh, attacking it with uh, eldritch blasts. I get a twenty-one to hit. It deflects off the armor. I knew it. I knew it. Um, I get a. Oh, so close. I get like a, uh, what is that? 32 to hit. That's it. And finally, um, another 21. So one hit. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, okay, for 13 force damage. Okay. 
It is heavily damaged, but it's still trucking on. And I, I'm going to reach out into Wilhelm's mind and Rudy is possessed. Something has taken control of her. Be wary. Come on. And I see, uh, and, and then I look into Rudy and I, I just, Rudy, fight it. Fight what is, what is there with you. We will get you out. Rudy, yeah. it is your turn. What can I do? <laughs> you feel like you are a puppet. There is something holding onto your body mm. and you feel a whisper in your mind. You are still fully conscious. You're aware of everything, but someone else is controlling your body. And it says to you, if you let me stay, I will help you survive. Uh, I've survived this long enough without needing something in my mind. I got my own demons in there. Thank you very much. Out you go. It, uh, it's, it says, harming your friends will not help me get out of here. Facing this beast will not help me get out of here. You are wounded. And it, um, it looks to your equipment. Do you have anything that will protect you? Mm. Protect your body from harm. Like armor? Or healing potions. You're, yes. you're very wounded. I have healing potions, yeah. Mm. It, uh... What powers have you not used on your axe yet? Um, I have four slots left on it, so um, I can use any anything once. Okay, interesting. Um, it looks over the situation and says, and seeing all, all this, you feel a psychic pull in your mind and a slight surge of adrenaline. You gain 30 temporary hit points. Oh. Keep it, Rudy. <laughs> I would keep it. And it says, I can help you survive. Destroy the gatekeeper. I can help. I mean, I was gonna do that with or without you. Can you get out of my head? I need to do this. It, uh, you feel the relaxing of the hold and you're able to act normally. Ooh. But it's still there. It's still there. All right. <laughs> Thank you for the moment. It's a we'll deal with it's this a later. helpful nightmare creature. I'm, I'm fine gonna, with it. I'm gonna go up to the guardian. Wrath yells at me to kill Rudy, and then Rudy just- No, I said she's possessed. I was like- I didn't give you any- It's there, I'm fine, I'm fine, I'm just gonna- It's like a new friend. Um, Everyone likes new friends. It's questionable at this point, but we'll see. <laughs> Look, this is very close to how I met Bruce, so. <laughs> um, 16 to hit? No, no, that will not get through the armor. Uh, 19? No. <gasps> Um, 24 to hit. That is a hit. Yeah. Oh, um, 30 damage. Nice. That's good. That's good. And you hear, you feel the presence in your mind say, again, again, you may make one more attack with advantage. Oh, with advantage. Keep it, Rudy, keep it. <laughs> <laughs> Alright. Um, nope. I no. Not, no. No, it turned a one into a two. Wow. Okay. Oh no, seven. Seven a two into a seven. Okay. Yep. Sorry. No. <laughs> Alright. D6 is all, please. Top of the round. Three. Four. Five. Okay. Another 
quantum cat steps through the portals. Wilhelm, it is your turn. So R- Rath yells to me, Rudy's possessed, and Rudy acts completely normally. So I just shrug at Rath, <laughs> and I sure. run up. I'm like, yeah, sure, Rath. Uh, and I run up, and I'm going to stab the big guy, the gatekeeper, getting 21. It is deflected. Yeah. I, know, I know that feeling. And then I'm going to... a lot to, of 21s against this thing. I'm going to shoot it. And then I back. <laughs> <laughs> It's tough. Alrighty. It winds up and punches Rudy once for 30 damage. Ugh. And then it punches the quantum cat in front of it. Missing. <gasps> Get him, kitty. Good job, little cat. Okay. Wrath. Uh, I am going to... Hmm. I th- I think I just uh, I'm gonna continue my assault on it. Nice. Nothing. N- nothing special. Uh, twenty three. That hits. And a twenty four. Two hits. Oh my gosh. Uh, seventeen force damage. Alrighty. It's it thunders forward. Rudy, it is your turn. Stand back up. Stand back up. You feel the possessed creature pull you to your feet, and it says, destroy it so we can escape. And it teleports you behind the machine. Oh. And I just say, I know, I'm working on it. I'm taking the, you just have have some patience, weird possession. I got this. And I'm gonna, Hit the hits. No, that's one miss. Uh, but that's two on the die. That's a cock die. That's a cock die. You gotta, you gotta get the other dice out of it. Yeah! Oh, there we go. One of the twenty stuck. <laughs> okay, um, so that is, ooh, I wrote this down like you did. Uh, 37 damage. The sundering blow cracks through the hull of the machine, renting it open with a gasp of steam and air out from inside as the organic eye is cut cut in half by the ax blow from behind. The machine collapses to the ground as the eye rots away and the metal corrodes and rusts, leaving only behind the golden disc bearing on the inside the second part of the story. And that's where we'll end for now. Oh! Oh, no. What? Amazing. Amazing. I'm possessed! Rudy, totally keep it. He just, he, it's all plus, no minus. That's how I see it. So far. We don't know. (laughs) He seems to be a... I don't even know if it's a he. It, they, they're nice. They seem nice. I think you should name it. <laughs> <laughs> that way you don't want to get rid of it. <laughs> Once you name it, you're keeping it. I mean, I'm, I Rudy normally adopts things, so who knows? It's but just I, another Wilhelm in, in the barn. <laughs> but the barn is in your head. <laughs> and the Wilhelm is Wilhelm Jr. <laughs> oh, Willie Jr. <laughs> yeah, we've named it <laughs> Willie Jr. Because I was such a pain in your head. <laughs> I don't know. Always reciting rules, telling you what to do. You, you don't know. tell me what to do. No, I know. I don't. <laughs> well, we will see the knowledge that you find on the inside of this inevitable creature next time. But for now, a big thank you to our cast. Jill, Kelly, and Joe. Oh, Play tonight. Gosh. Uh, and a huge thank you to Kyle for giving us thumbs up on occasion on the choices we made tonight. Yay! Uh, very reassuring. <laughs> um, and a huge thank you to our Dungeon Master, Monty Martin, uh, for running this uh, nightmare. <laughs> thank you. 
what an amazing <laughs> uh, encounter. Yeah. Um, which uh, had some incredible assets produced by some talented artists, and they've graciously given us permission to use them uh, in our uh, in our tabletop games. And we encourage you to go out and support some of these amazing creators. Um, I believe this is uh, uh, Dungeon Forge, Dwarven Forge, Dwarven Forge, with a bunch of WizKids minis. Yeah. WizKids minis, um, uh, character artwork by Elizabeth Perot, and music by Tabletop Audio. Of course, don't forget to look at the links below for our Teespring store. You can find all of your favorite Dungeon Dudes shirts. Check out bit.ly slash Dungeon Dudes merch. Our videos and live streams are made possible because we have an amazing Patreon community supporting our work. If you enjoy the show and want to help support the channel, please follow the links in the description below. We also have a phenomenal Discord community exclusive for our patrons, so you can join us on Discord and chat with us about all things D&D and Drakenheim and anything else you want. You can also join our writers' rooms and Q&As on our discord and we got new videos dropping all the time on youtube as well so head over to the channel and check those out too and be sure to tune in next tuesday when we broadcast the campaign on twitch you can check us out from 6 p.m to 8 p.m eastern time at twitch.tv slash dungeon underscore dudes you can also watch the video episodes of the show on youtube or check us out as an audio only podcast as well thank you so much for watching and we will see you next time in dragonheim